Crazy. 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 I need my ear thingies, my eye thingies. Eye thingies. One half deaf. Ear thingies. Well, gang, it's like your third grade teacher said. You've got to check your work. Now that we've got her on these fancy, fancy wheels, I went ahead and checked my work, and we've got a problem. I know what it is, but I don't know exactly where it is. All right, gang, follow along here. Over here on the passenger side, I've got the tape on the outside edge of a three inch axle. So I'm measuring 101 and a half, which is plus an inch and a half for the center of the axle to 103 inch wheelbase. Same arrangement over here on the driver's side. I'm at 102 plus an inch and a half, which gets us a 103 and a half inch wheelbase. I think you guys can see the problem here. So, Model A is 103.5 inch wheelbase. Either one would technically work on a hot rod. We're gonna go with the Model A wheelbase because I'm gonna run a set of Model A fenders that need to fit that wheelbase. So, we're gonna go with 103.5. But that means the passenger side is short by a half an inch. The thing about this is the rear axle could be skewed the front axle could be skewed, meaning the passenger side front wheel could be too far back, or it could be a little bit of both, 50-50, 60-40, whatever. So now we have to basically repeat the process that made the mistake in the first place and do better this time. So granted, the wishbones do indeed have some adjustment in length right here, and the rear hairpins also have adjustment both at the axle and at this point right here where it meets the frame. A lot of adjustments. So first things first, we must confirm that the wishbones on the front axle are the same length. Make sure that's not our mistake. Then we've got to make sure that our hairpins are dialed in at the same length. And then we've got to figure out which mounting point we screwed up. Considering our measuring implement is this wiggly thing and we are measuring through air at angles, we just got to do our best to match the mounting points on both sides when we're trying to compare two measurements. So I'm going to jam this tape measure in right along the wishbone into the axle at the deepest point. It's got a little recess and measure the best I can to the center of the bolt. I'm going to call it 36 and a quarter. Aiming for the same thing here. Pretty darn close. Might be a sixteenth off, but we'll call that within adjustment. So wishbones are at least the same length and set up the same length. Even if I didn't cut them correctly or perfectly and weld everything in perfectly and there was a little bit of a fuzz there, uh, the thread count on the joints, hind joints is rod and joint, whatever, are uh, making it even enough so far. So. We need to figure out if the mounting brackets are in the same place on both sides of the frame. The mounting brackets are identical, so in theory. So if I pick a point on the mounting bracket and match it to a place in the frame that's symmetrical. Now I did do all of this in the wishbone setup video, which is here, if I remember to put it there, but I may have messed up. So I'm gonna double check my work. If the mount on the frame is off, that'll skew everything. So uh, basically we're measuring from the mounting point on the frame to some other place on the frame. It's tricky because the fact that these are bolts indicates to me that this cross member has been removed. I'm 98.26743% sure that these used to be rivets. So there is potential slop here. Now I was going off the frame horns, but I'll show you why that's a bad idea in a minute. Uh, I got a mounting hole here that hopefully I can match on the other side. But again, it's one of those things you just kind of hook on this thing, using your judgment on your eyeballing the center of that pole. So I got 29 and a quarter, 34 and 13 sixteenths to the center of that bolt. It's arbitrary, kind of. And we'll do the same thing over here. Got 29. 
the center of that hole. And 34 and a half. So that would suggest that this bracket over here is a quarter inch further forward than that bracket over there, which would just, you know, that kind of explains half of our half inch problem. Let's triple check and get some more measurements. Hmm. 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 All right, so every measurement I've taken going from anything that I can match on both sides is showing me that the brackets, because I'm measuring up from this corner, are a quarter inch off. That the one on that side is a quarter inch further back than the one on this side, thus making, in theory, that side one quarter inch shorter in wheelbase. So I wanna get that quarter inch back, so if I move the far bracket forward, we should be okay. Now, just need to double check these brackets. I don't see why they'd be different, but I just wanna put my eyeballs on them. You know, mocked up bracket. Bracket on this side. All right, it's a little dark, but it's the same basic deal. This is pretty much straight line. Now, I will say that I did hook on the brackets and pull the measurement all the way to the front of the frame horns, and I got a full half inch out at that point. So I had to do some double checking, and this I'll show you this for illustrative purposes. As I wondered why that would be, I noticed this one has been welded on. So that means I don't really trust that to be exact because it's got a full weld all the way around it. Hot rods, man, it's a nearly 100 year old car. So it's been through a lot and we're gonna get it back on the road. But, you know, we got some figuring to do in order to do that. The more I look at this cross member, the more I realize it was removed at some point. And with the frame horns broken, I don't even know how to check to see that it was put on square. Because, you know, you drill out rivets or whatever, the holes get a little wallered. But again, it's a hot rod. A little bit of discrepancy is gonna work, not a half inch. Right now, pencil it in, we got a quarter inch off in our front end, our passenger side wishbone bracket needs to come one quarter of an inch toward the front of the car. If we thought the front end was full of like squinty eye measurements and pretty close guesses, the rear end's a thousand times worse. So what we have here is a rear radius rod, hairpin, pseudo ladder bar setup, whatever you want to call it. So we've got a cross member that we've added in the frame right here. We've got our hairpins coming off at an angle to mounting points below that. And we've got two mounting points on the back of our frame, right? Top and bottom. So there's a room for discrepancy if these are rotated or clocked in any way, because this is an adjustment point, this is an adjustment point, and there's an adjustment point all the way up there at the front end. So the first thing that we've got to do in my assessment of assessing the problem is make sure that we are good from this, that this cross member that we've added is square to the rear cross member. We've just got to make some assumptions here, right? Like this frame tapers, um, it was boxed in. Honestly, there's, I never checked to see if it was square originally, meaning we never ran diagonals from the cr front cross member to the rear cross member, but the rear cross member is still riveted in place. I kind of just now noticed that the front cross <laughs> member has been removed and put back in. But uh, I think we're probably overall going to be more than close enough. Um, I may eat those words later, but the frame looks in pretty good condition. So what we're going to do first is just measure the distance from this cross member to the cross member we added and make sure to our best ability that we're pretty square on this back end. All right, so fish the tape measure through going from that corner hooked onto the cross member to the back of this cross member, I've got 38 inches. Similar situation over here. It's pretty much dead nuts, 38 inches. I suppose in theory, we could have a parallelogram, uh, but in order for that to be the case, the rear cross member would have to be out of square to the frame, right? If I'd put in both cross members, I'd run diagonals. But at this point, I have to trust something as a starting point. 
and that makes our rear cross member square to the frame pseudo inherently thanks mr ford for those of you guys warning me while you crack a new beer you're right i went ahead and just ran diagonals i jammed the tape measure as far as i could into the corner of the frame over here ran it to a spot that i could duplicate basically the intersection of the cross member and the frame over there and we ended up with 47 and a half inches both directions which means hopefully my cross member is in the right place whatever that means for us but more importantly it is square to the existing parts of the frame which is pretty significant when you're trying to basically do the alignment type of stuff that we're trying to do here i'm going to measure the mounting points that i installed on the cross member and we are going to continue the hunt right now what we are looking for is another quarter inch on this side of the car uh the passenger side of the car what it feels like right now is the driver's side is correct so long as we don't move it by adjusting the passenger side. All right, gang, it's impossible to show you anything under here. But I'm going to do my best. So I measured basically from the edge of that bolt way yonder to the center of the bolts going through these brackets. Now, that's kind of... The measurements came out the same, but if our bolts aren't clocked the same way, are they clocked the same way? They actually are. They're both point forward. So, and if I remember correctly, and there's a video of setting these up, I laid them on top of each other and basically set the distances. So we should be fine. They should be set up the same way. So now we need to check the brackets on the rear axle, make sure they're in the same spot on both sides of the axle, which I recall doing. And then we gotta check these brackets up front, make sure they're equidistant from the edge of the frame towards center. And then, we just gotta keep looking. Just gotta keep looking. Gotta keep looking. Gang, I think I found it. Um, this is another hard thing to measure, but just follow me here. Um, this was clearly me miscounting or something um but watch so again this is one of those situations where we're trying to get measurements from a thousand points right so let's say let's say i come off of the we're coming off the flange or the backing plate for the drums right roughly if i go in a straight line i'm at nine inches where i intersect my welded on bracket if we come over to this side and I come off that flange at the same point, try to go straight out, I'm at 10 inches. So every measurement I'm doing is proving the same thing, that I am one inch further in on this side, which would in fact push this part of the axle back. By being further out on this and increasing this angle, well, we have gone We've pulled this part of the axle forward. Even if you look here, where I ground this down to weld is where it should be. If you look at this original bracket to the axle and this versus this bracket. So basically I just screwed up somewhere along the way. It's that simple. Uh, check your work. I'm gonna double check these brackets up front because I didn't make it that far. I already found a problem back here. But we'll double check those things, uh, which I remember doing on the bench. So hopefully I made those even, um, but we'll check it out. And if we don't find anything else, I'm going to shift this over to where it should be, which is an inch in to match this one, because that's the correct wheelbase side. And we will adjust the bracket in the front and I'll bet you we've solved our problem. All right, I double checked this cross member really quick, basically just measured in from both sides to the front and back of the bracket that's welded underneath. I was, you know, doing some acrobatics that nobody needed to try to follow. That said, ultimately this was pretty lucky. I'm glad I just double checked because I hadn't had the actual tires that were gonna go on the car until this week. And so now that I've double checked, I have found a problem that could have happened after final welding, which is why everything's just tacked right now. It could happen when the car's put together and I took it for a test drive and then couldn't figure out why it was indeed just trying to go in a circle, like a clockwise circle constantly, which is what will happen if two wheels are closer together on one side than the other. And honestly, 
because I boned this and the bracket's actually in the wrong place, even if I could have adjusted it out, it would never have been right. What else do we need to double check if we do that? If we shift that a little bit, we'll just need to double check that the body is still sitting in the center of the wheel. In fact, let's eyeball that right now. And I'm gonna come up a little bit in front of this one. I think it's like this mark or so would be center right here. And it wants to be in line with this blue tape. So this does want to go back. Even from all of my other measurements, this wheel's sitting a little further forward than whatever this tape mark was that I determined. Now I'm assuming that is still accurate, but for now, it's one other indication that this wheel's not where it should be. I mean, this one's looking a little further back, which is interesting. Don't know. Don't know. I think it's gonna be okay. Again, it's a lot of eyeballing, but what I do know for sure is those brackets are in the wrong place. Now that I'm pretty confident in exactly how I screwed this up, I'm gonna go ahead and break these welds loose. I mean, it's gonna be the worst part of the process, just sneaking a tool in here. I got three tack welds on this side, two tack welds on this side. That's why it's tacked. Working backwards is completely inevitable. The question is how far you have to work backwards. And this is why everything is just tacked right now. So. Uh, let me find some safety glasses and let's jam on this. All right, just so you guys are getting full everything, before I cut that up and start moving it, um, I measured from the axle to the cross member on both sides. This side of the axle is one quarter of an inch closer because this hairpin is at an angle, right? It's not straight on the frame. I am hoping that moving it just about an inch in to match the other side will result in one quarter inch of distance between the cross member and the axle itself. So you could do the math to figure out what kind of triangle that is, right? Because you need know, center line from the axle to the cross member, then you have a triangle. And if you change that angle, you know, it's, it's geometry. We're not gonna do any of that. I am building this car to go 70 miles an hour. I know that's a little scary, but um, it has to track well down the road. It can't be all over the place. And that's doable. It's absolutely doable. But things gotta be right. Not like what I just did. So let's get to cutting. All right, guys. So I knocked this thing loose and I slid it over about an inch. It's roughly where it needs to be, but I wanted to bring you in before I finalize any of this. I don't know if you can see this, but this gap right here is right about a quarter of an inch. Just by moving this and changing the angle, we opened up some room for this axle to come back just about a quarter of an inch, which is accurate to our measurements with that thing in about the right place. So I'm gonna slide the axle back, double check my measurements, get a tack in the center, and we're gonna continue repairing the mistake. But, you know, I think that's worth noting. One inch this way at this angle is exactly, exactly where we were wrong, which is encouraging because sometimes you can't find the problem. This, I found the problem, found it. All right, we've been measuring and measuring and measuring. I took the bracket off, cleaned it up so the, mo the welds weren't in the way. This seems to have scooted back. I've got a clamp holding it in place. I measured the distance from the top of the bracket to this point, middle of the bracket to this point. Matches on both sides. You can see that this distance looks a lot more like this a distance. So I think it's right. I mean, this is actually going straight back to where I had ground the spot on the axle for these welds. I also measured from the cross member to the axle, the same points I've been using the whole time. We are now within a 16th. Um, in fact, this side's just a fuzz further back than this side, if that measurement's accurate, but I'm pulling a tape measure through three-dimensional space, you know, not running along a flat surface or anything like that. So uh, even if they're a little off in that case, that's well within the adjustment on that end, that rod end on the cross member. So at this point, we're gonna get back to it. I'm gonna tack weld these in, double check our wheelbase, go assess if we still need to adjust the front, which I feel like we do. So let's drag the welder out, watch this right there, so that's convenient. We got it, and a 16th more actually. So we're roughly at 101 and three quarters. So plus an inch and a half, it's 
102 and three quarters, that's 103 and a quarter. So we have gained our quarter of an inch back. And now if we've measured all the stuff up here correctly, and I move that bracket a quarter inch forward, that'll push this part of the axle a quarter inch that away. And then we will be dead on our 103 and a half inch wheelbase. Let's do it. Should we double check? Why not? We should always double check. Right here. Oh, 38 and three quarters. 39. Okay, so that's like the third or fourth place. I was going to exaggerate, but I wanted to be accurate because this is actually important. It's like the third or maybe fourth place that I've gotten a quarter inch difference between a point on the frame and my bracket. So that tells me this bracket needs to go forward one quarter of an inch. So it's just three tack welds. We'll bust those loose. We'll make a mark of where our thing is now. We will bust the tack welds and move it forward a quarter of an inch. All right, we got a mark. That's where it is. Uh, soon to be, that's where it was. All right, we're a quarter inch forward from our mark on our bracket. Tack weld this in, we'll wrestle this guy forward, and uh, yeah, check the wheelbase again. So gang, I went and did it. Um, it took a monumental amount, well not a monumental, but it took a little bit of effort. I had to put a pipe across the front door, use the come along. I just needed it to go uh, just about a quarter of an inch, but now that I've gotten it to go there with great effort, uh, and it didn't want to be there, I've checked the wheelbase again, and uh, now I'm a quarter inch over on this side. So I don't quite know what's happening. I'm inclined to cut my new welds and slide the bracket back and let it be where it wants to be, clamp it, and then double check the measurement again. We're within the ability of adjustment. You know, if we're a quarter inch out somewhere, we definitely have you know, adjustment, eighth, front, back, whatever, however it needs to be. Um, just perplexed. Like it was, it was a bit of a struggle. Like it didn't want to go, which made me feel like I was binding the spring and whatever, but you got to use all the information the car is giving you, all the measurements, everything else. So I just, uh, think for two seconds, but I think I'm going to cut that bracket off and move it back. It's just going to fight me today. Yeah, I got 102 and a quarter, and I need to be at 102 because I've got a three inch axle tube, so inch and a half is half the axle tube coming off the face of it. Uh, gets me to 103 and a half. It's so crazy. Maybe I just mismeasured, but now I'm getting consistently 102 and a quarter, which makes me need to move Double check the rear end and we are square to that cross member. Matches on either side. It makes me feel like the front end is now off. Right? I mean, I've got my mark scribed on there still. All I gotta do is go back to it, which I think is exactly what I'm gonna do. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I need my ear thingies, my eye thingies. Eye thingies. One and a half deaf. Ear thingies. Right now, just move back halfway to my mark. To the fuzz, give it a little tap. That's 102. Let that be proof to you that I can screw something up while fixing a screw up that I'd already made. Let's talk about it all. So the reality is so we're back, we're within a 16th of 102 inches from the outside of the axle flange to the center of the kingpin on the axle. So I'm adding an inch and a half knowing that's a three inch axle tube. And that gets me to 103 and a half inches the stock wheelbase on a Model A, which is what I'm going for because I'm running fenders that need to match that wheelbase. So, what does this mean for all of this? I mean, I still have an alignment to do, meaning I need to make sure that the 
front axle is totally square to the frame and to the rear axle, and make sure the rear axle is totally square to the frame. But that's what these adjustment points are for. So we have adjustment here, we have adjustment here, and we have pinion angle adjustment back there. That should be more than enough to get us right, but it's just one of those things, guys. You're using a tape measure, which is kind of wiggly, and you're measuring points, trying to get as accurate as possible. But if you lose a 16th on one end and you're eyeballing a 16th a little bit off on the other end, well, you know, there's your eighth inch. Um, also dealing with, I don't know, nearly, 100 year old stuff at this point, 95 year old stuff. So if the frame rail is a tiny bit bent or tweaked or whatever, none of this stuff is straight lines. You just have to like look and observe and use your best judgment. But in doing so, I found a no joke, serious problem back here. Something I had definitely screwed up easily, easily checked by measurements. Um, I was measuring when I did it. I wasn't in a hurry. I just screwed up. It's that simple. So that's fixed. That fixed the majority of our problem ultimately. And yeah, the front end, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't completely know how to reconcile the fact that I was getting what I felt like a quarter inch or just under a quarter inch discrepancy on where this bracket landed on the frame rail, except to say that, well, I placed the center I measured off of this hole to the same kind of arrangement beforehand to make sure they were the same. And this time I was using this back corner. So maybe my brackets have just a fuzz off or who knows. Um, but doing what I've done and going through this whole process, I actually think I'm all right. And my advice to you is measure from as many places as you can possibly find. Triple check, triple check, triple check. Check your work, kids. All right, gang, thanks for watching Between the Sharks. If this stuff is happening on your project, it's all part of it, man. It is all part of it. Have a good attitude, learn something, and guess what? The next time, it doesn't mean you're gonna nail it. You may mismeasure. I simply read a tape measure wrong and screwed up. Gonna do it again, gonna do it again. Anyway, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Get out there, good luck on your projects, and we will see you next time on Between the Sharks. Water break. <laughs>